Hey guys, what's going on buddy? It's Mr. Abigail here. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another BTS reaction and today is going to be something that we've been meaning to do for a long, long time and we are finally getting around to doing it. It's going to be the BTS Storyline Summary 2020 update by XLS. Now you guys have been requesting this for ages and I've been meaning to check it out for so, so long but I've been putting it off, putting it off, putting it off. I really don't know why. I guess the whole storyline kind of, uh, kind of scares me in a way because I know there's so much to it and there's, you know, so much you know there's, there's so many little bits to it but i think this video is going to do a really good job of fully explaining that because obviously we did or you know or the whole storyline when it came to the wing stuff the short films everything like that and i know all these little bits to the storyline but i can't really piece it together yet so um i feel like this video would be a good help i wanted to say a massive thank you to holly jane for requesting this over on the patreon and thank you to my other very generous patrons for voting this video in and um yeah you've got them to thank guys because today we are finally going to be doing it we're going to be checking it out it's going to be a long video as well it's going to be about an hour long so make sure you got some stats guys and uh yeah without further ado let's jump right in but yeah, as always, guys, just before you jump into it, if you are brand new to my channel, you've never seen my face before, but you have been enjoying these BTS reactions you've been seeing, and you are not yet subscribed, make sure you click that button down below, guys. It would mean the absolute world to me. We do try to upload these BTS reactions uh, multiple times every single week, and uh, we'll be keeping up with everything when it comes to the boys and everything that they do and release uh, in the future. So it's definitely worth subscribing down below if you're not already. And again, guys, this is a Patreon suggestion, this video. Uh, I want to say a massive thank you to my Patreons for voting it in. In, but also over on the Patreon, you can find loads more exclusive content. We've got BTS Ron reactions over there, BTS Bon Voyage reactions, all of the BTS documentaries we've reacted to as well. Uh, there's so much stuff over there, so it's definitely worth going and checking that out if you do uh, want to see some extra content, guys. But without further ado, we're going to hop right in. It's going to be a long one, this. But I am definitely ready to uh, delve into this storyline and just see, just, I, I feel like I'm going to be enlightened today. So uh, I'm super excited. Let's do it. Welcome back to my channel and to an updated BTS storyline summary. Reminder that this is a fictional storyline created by Big Hit. This video contains information from BTS's music videos, films, highlight reels, concert VCRs, Save Me Webtoon, BTS Universe Story Game, Notes Album, and the Notes 1 and 2 books. Wow. Yeah, puzzle pieces everywhere. This is an updated version Dude, it from just, my it last rolls over BTS everything, storyline summary back in 2019, but since then we've gotten a lot more information, so that's why I'm making this updated version. Enjoy! We'll begin with the boys meeting. So one thing I do want to know, I, I believe they haven't they haven't released anything that is like directly involved with the storyline in a while, have they? I don't think since 2020 they have. In high school, March 2, year 19. The boys were late for school and were sent to clean the storage classroom as punishment. Through this event, they became close friends and made the storage classroom their secret hideout. They shared a lot of happy moments together, filled with laughter and joy. June 12, Year 19 They decided to ditch school to find a rock by the sea that would grant wishes, but when they got there, the rock was no longer there. It was under construction for a seawall, but they still shouted out their dreams over the loud sounds of the drill. This was when they took their first Polaroid picture. As time went on, hardships in life began to tear them apart. Around May, year 20, Namjoon moved to the countryside with his brother, mother, and ill father. He was about to write a letter to the boys, but instead, he fogged up the window in their hideout and wrote, We must survive. Namjoon left without saying anything to the boys. Namjoon lived in poverty. His family has been struggling to pay for the father's hospital bills. He would work two to three part-time jobs in order to pay for the bill and to make a living. The boys looked up to Namjoon because of how responsible he was, but he felt pressured. They'd say how they wanted to be an adult like him, but little did they know how he felt. Taehyung looked up to Namjoon a lot. When he was young, his mother left him and his older sister behind. Both him and his sister grew up getting abused by their alcoholic father. Since Taehyung doesn't open up about his feelings and hardships, the boys don't really know what he's going through. June 11, Year 20 Sokjin was forced by the principal to reveal their hideout. The principal threatened to tell Sokjin's father about how he was a bad student. The dean walked into the hideout while Jungkook and Yoongi were playing the piano. 
he came up and slapped Jungkook. Yoongi became defensive and ended up pushing the dean. Because of this, Yoongi got expelled from school. And Jungkook blamed himself for- Dude, there is so much to this. And the fact that, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know who has come up with this. I'm guessing it's just Big Hit along with the boys and everything. But you would never know unless you properly delved into this stuff. What happened? Sokjin lived in a wealthy family. When his mother passed away, his father sent him to the US to live with his grandmothers. His father was an assemblyman who was always strict and cold towards him. Sokjin just wanted to make his family proud of him. September 15, year 20. Hosok and Jimin were at the bus stop when Jimin ended up having a seizure. He was brought to the hospital and Hosok tried to stay by his side, but Jimin's mother turned him away. When Hosok was about six to seven years old, oh, his yeah. mother brought him to a carnival and gave him a chocolate bar. She told him to close his eyes, then count to 10. When he opened his eyes, she was gone. She abandoned him, and he ended up living in an orphanage for 10 years. Through this event, Hosok developed narcolepsy, or at least that's what he says. I have a theory that he has a disorder called Munchausen syndrome, which we see during his film for Mama. It's a mental disorder. Dude, Excelest is that like what? How do you even spot stuff like this, man? In which a person repeatedly and deliberately acts as if he or she has a physical or mental illness when he or she is not really sick. In the notes one book, for May 16, year 22, Hosok admitted to Jimin that his narcolepsy was actually fake. September 28, year 20. Wow. Jimin is still in the hospital and has been there for two years now. Today was a special day for him. He lied for the first time and told the doctors that he didn't remember a thing. A song lie, obviously. When Jimin was about eight years old, an incident at the flowering laboratorium scarred him for life. After a school picnic, he began to walk home alone since his parents didn't show up to pick him up. It began to rain. So he ran into a storage building of the flowering laboratorium. That's where he saw a little kid laying on the ground tied up in a room. He had bruises on his arms and legs and scars on his wrist from being tied up for too long. He witnessed the kid trying to fight back by using a box cutter, but a man unarmed the boy and slammed the door shut. Jimin heard the boy's screams turn into wailing and gradually subsided. Jimin was able to escape without being caught, but ever since this incident, he began to have seizures and his parents would keep bringing him to the hospital. He so I believe what we're seeing right now is the Save You webtoon, which I haven't read. So this is all completely new stuff to me, this bit. Transferred to five different schools because of this. We find out that the kid's last name is Choi, and he was about five years old at that time. The little boy was discovered near Huayong Mountain on April 10, and he suffered from temporary amnesia. The police were looking for clues to conduct an investigation of the case, but it seemed like nothing was solved. This little kid is most likely the boy Sokjin tried to save on October 10, year 9. Men were trying to kidnap this kid for ransom because the father's company went bankrupt, but Sukjin helped him escape. He tried to hide this kid in his house, but Sukjin's father let the men into the house to take the kid away. Now here's the thing, Sukjin's event happened in year 9, and Jimin's event happened in year 11, so I'm not sure if that kid was really kept for that long or what happened in between, but See, this story, like, is still not solved, is it? Like, they leave so many, like, open-ended parts that we, the army, are left to kind of, like, theorize and kind of try and work out what actually happened, but we don't fully know yet. Just make note of that. September 30, year 20. Jungkook would go to their secret hideout every day in hopes of one day seeing them all gather together again. In the end, they didn't. It was just Hosok and Jungkook. Jungkook relied on the boys a lot. His father left when he was seven, so he lived with his mother, stepfather, and stepbrother. 
He'd get abused by his stepbrother while his stepfather and mother watched and did nothing. So his family were the boys, who were now falling apart. He was very close to Yoongi, and he'd always be listening to Yoongi play the piano at their secret hideout. Yoongi has always loved making music, but when he was 15 years old, his house caught on fire with his mother still inside. She passed away, and she was the reason why Yoongi started playing the piano. Him and his father don't have a good relationship, and wow, it seemed as I if never his father that. didn't want him to continue making music. Theory Yoongi's mom was the one who started the fire to commit suicide. She supposedly went insane and was also a pianist. Now the story what goes What the hell? On. That is a crazy London theory. London left for the countryside without telling anyone, but comes back after over a year and lives in a container. Sukjin transferred to a school in Los Angeles without a word. Taehyung's whereabouts were always unknown. Yoongi never showed up after being expelled from school. Jimin never came back to school after going to the hospital. Hosok was now working a part-time job at a burger joint called Two Star Burger, and he would sometimes see Jungkook in his school uniform. April 11, year 22. Sokjin finally came back to Korea after 2 years and 10 months. He drove to a gas station and spotted Namjoon working there. He decided not to say hi and ended up driving away. May 22, year 22. I do. I remember RM at the at the petrol station. Obviously, two. the Sokjin begins the to wonder what the other that. boys were doing now. He decides to go back to the gas station to visit Namjoon, but when he gets there, he finds out Namjoon ended up going to jail. He got his phone number and went to visit him. Namjoon revealed that he got into jail after getting into a fight with a customer. Hoseok was in the hospital after a bad accident. They didn't know where Taehyung and Jimin were and that both Jungkook and Yoongi were dead. When Sokjin was heading out Wait, of the what? police office, he saw Taehyung outside of the entrance. He was tied up and convicted of murder. Sokjin went back to the beach they visited back in high school and asked himself, Jesus, where what? did it all go wrong? Then a voice spoke to him. If you could turn back time, do you believe you can straighten out the errors and mistakes and save everyone? He woke up and it was April 11 again. He thought it was all a dream and continued his day like nothing happened. He went to the gas station and saw Namjoon then again decided not to say hi. He began to drive through an alley when a body landed on the hood of his car. He realized it was oh. Jungkook. His heart began to Dude, be see each of these each of these references and each of these scenes from what I'm guessing are the Save Me webtoon. I recognize that from a music video. Am I going mad? I, I think I've I've definitely seen that scene he in a music video. It was Jungkook. His heart now began to be fast sense. and everything shattered like a mirror. It was April 11 again. So he kept thinking everything was a dream and so the same things would happen again. What? He went to the gas station and didn't say hi to Namjoon. And this time he's walking down the alley and then Jungkook's body dropped behind him. Everything shattered and a voice spoke to him once again. You won't make it out here alone in this entangled destiny. Here's how you remember the loop. And as the voice spoke to him, he began to see fragments of the previous timelines. Then another voice spoke. If you could turn back time, do you believe you could straighten out the errors and mistakes and save everyone? That's when Sokjin finally realized that he's been going back in time. Okay, now things get super complicated. Dude, so, yeah, because I remember a lot of you guys were going on about Jin being like a, a time shifter and being able to travel back in time, and that was kind of what was going on During this in the journey, short films. he begins to find out how each of the boys get in trouble and how they die, but every time he travels back in time, things would change. Because of the butterfly effect, location and time would sometimes change. 
Reminder that butterfly effect is a part of the chaos theory that states that one small change in a situation can drastically change the Which outcome of an event. That's At this point, like, we don't know how many times Sukjin had traveled back in time, but he began to realize that he has to learn more about the boys and their struggles in order to help them. He also realizes that he needs the boys to help him, but he does this indirectly. If you want all of the details, I do recommend you starting with the Save Me webtoon and then continue by playing the BTS Universe Story game. I did create a summary for the game if you'd like to check that out. Link is Guys, in this is why, man. This is why I've been, I guess, putting this off because there's so much to take in all at once. Like, this is crazy. Look, look at all these different, like, stories they are. My description box. But I'll be going over each character's Maybe tragedies, I need to read the which is shown webtoon. during their Save Me webtoon, their reason, which is found in the BTS Universe Story game, and the solution, which is found during the Notes 1 and 2 book. On April 11th, so year I've got 22, to like Namjoon this gets thing. into a fight with a customer at the gas station. The customer would get his gas filled, then drop the cash on the ground for Namjoon to pick up. This would cause a fight, and Namjoon would end up in jail. Reason Money has always been a constant source of frustration and misery for Namjoon. He has been working two to three part-time jobs to pay for his ill father's hospital bills. Because of this, he lived in a container and would sometimes sleep at the gas station's break room. He had to put his love for books aside and hold off on purchases because of his budget. That's why he couldn't stomach kneeling down to pick up the money and being insulted over it. Solution. Sokjin lets the whole scene with the rude customer play out, but as soon as the customer drops the money for Namjoon to pick up, Sokjin comes in and grabs it, then hands it to the customer. This saved Namjoon from getting into a fight and going to jail. Right. Later that night- It's so weird, like, I, I love the idea of having this character that goes back in time and just changes these little things which just completely alters the whole, like, how the future pans out. April I love that 11, idea. Year 22, Jungkook would purposely get into fights with thugs on the street, then make his way to the top of a construction building to jump off. Reason. The boys were his family, and he was no longer in contact with them. He felt like his family didn't care about him and that no one cared about him. Solution After Sokjin saved Namjoon at the gas station, Namjoon invited him to meet up with Taehyung and Hosok after work. Sokjin asked about the others, and Namjoon said he didn't really talk to the others anymore, but he does think Hosok still talked to Yoongi. Sokjin would encourage Namjoon to call Hosok and this would cause a domino effect. Namjoon would call Hosok, asking him to invite Yoongi, then Yoongi calls Jungkook before oh. he decides to jump off the construction building. May 2, year 22. Dude, this is Yoongi beautiful. Yoongi burns himself in either a motel or his workroom. He also tries on April 29 and May 10 during different timelines because of the butterfly effect. Reason Yoongi believed that bad things would happen to people he cared about. This caused him to distance himself from the boys, especially Jungkook. Solution Sokjin realized the last time Yoongi genuinely smiled was when all seven of the boys were together. He also realized that both Yoongi and Jungkook had the same tinge of desperation in their eyes. Jungkook was the key to saving Yoongi. So this time, instead of Sokjin doing it himself, he had Jungkook visit Yoongi at his workroom. This would cause Yoongi to run away and go into the motel. Jungkook would then try to run after him and follow him. Sokjin left a clue in front of the motel Yoongi was in so Jungkook could find him. And that's how Jungkook ends up saving Yoongi from the fire. Oh. May 12, year 22. Dude, this this is insane because like obviously I knew all of these things happen and I've seen all the references within the music videos, but I never knew the backstory to it and the and how this all came to be. Jimin this is drowns crazy, himself man. in the bathtub at the hospital. 
And if then we've he got didn't the take bathtub. his life while he was in the surgical ward, he would make the same choice days after he returned to the closed ward. It's weird because in the songs, like, the, you can, like, if you're watching them for the first time with no context, you wouldn't think that all of these things had such a dark connotation to them, like suicide and all of this. But, like, then you see this and you realize, like, wow. Reason. Jimin believes that he belongs in the hospital. This was his way of running away from the past incident he witnessed at the Flaring Laboratorium. He didn't want to make things any more difficult for his mother than they already were. So that's why he took his life. Solution. Sokjin had tried to convince Jimin to leave and also had Taehyung try, but it didn't work. Ho Sook is supposed to be the one who could convince Jimin to leave the hospital. May 10, year 22. Hoseok falls and hits his head while walking on a bridge. He ended up in the hospital for a checkup. May 12, year 22. Hosok accidentally falls down the stairs at the hospital and breaks his ankle. Reason Hosok gets a call from the children's home, which is his orphanage, in regards to Kim Jung Hee, the staff who was like a mother to him. She has colon cancer, and because it was in its late stage, surgery had a low chance of success. After finding out this news on May 10, he would collapse on the bridge. As for the accident at the hospital, Hosok would notice a woman with a long skirt, hat pressed low, with a child. He thought it was his mother, so he followed her down the stairs and ended up falling. Solution Sokjin figured out that Jimin was the solution to saving Hosok. Hosok actually ended up in the same hospital Jimin was at. And while Jimin was waiting for an elevator at the hospital, Sokjin called out his name and led him over to the staircase. Jimin saw Hosok running down the stairs and was able to catch him before he fell. What? After Hosok Dude, that was released is crazy. from the hospital, Dude, Jin, I mean, even when you know the future, it's not that it's not that easy to try and prevent all these things from happening. But the fact that Jin is just like individually like straightening all these things out and saving the boys. He came back with the others. They all worked together to help Jimin and encouraged him to leave the hospital. May 20, year 22. Dude, Taehyung and it's just, it's, it's just seeing all these references on the screen as well. It's a beautifully edited video, this, because we've got all the references on the screen as they come up in the story. Come home to his alcoholic father abusing his older sister. Oh, I remember this. This caused him to grab a bottle, break it open, then stab his father to death. This led this up to brutal. him going to jail. If he didn't end up in jail, he ended up jumping off the viewing platform by the ocean in front of the boys in a different timeline. Reason. Taehyung and Wait, his hang on. In a different timeline? To have been hang on. Let me, let me go back. Hang on. This led up to him going to jail. If he didn't end up in jail, he ended up jumping off the viewing platform by the ocean in front of the boys in a different timeline. Oh, so Reason. if he didn't go to Taehyung jail... Taehyung and his sister have been dealing with their alcoholic father for years. And Taehyung was fed up with the violence. As for him jumping off the platform, this happened during a timeline when they stopped him from murdering his father. He was frightened that he would become just like his father because of the recent incident. Solution. Sokjin had personally tried to stop Taehyung but ended up accidentally getting stabbed so this time around, he had Hosok give it a try. Hosok was able to catch Taehyung just in time and stopped him from stabbing his father. As for Taehyung jumping off the platform, Sokjin went up the platform instead. So here we are. I think it's such a beautiful thing, like how how the whole thing is based around being able to go back in time and influence what you do. And it's kind of a story and it kind of tells and it kind of teaches the lesson that like, you know, you should just care for one another and make sure everyone's OK while you're in the moment. Like, oh, it's, it's br like you can pull so many different things in this story. May 22, year 22. Sokjin finally saved everyone. They were all gathered at the beach together once again. 
After the sunset, they went back to the place they were staying at and started dancing, laughing, and having fun. Sokjin thought this was a good time to finally confess to the boys. Taehyung thought he was going to tell everyone about what was really going on. A couple days before their beach trip, Taehyung asked Sokjin about the dreams he had been having. He has been having dreams of the past timelines. Sukjin said he didn't know anything, but Taehyung knew he was lying. So when Sukjin started confessing, and it was actually about the time he snitched on them during high school and how Yoongi got expelled, that made Taehyung angry because he thought Sukjin was just being a coward and not admitting to the dreams and stuff. Taehyung then shouts out, What's so great about being together? Who are we to one another? We're all alone in the end. Ah. That's when Sokjin punched Taehyung and they broke out in a fight because, you know, his repeated attempts, his countless tries to save his friends, he repeated so many moments of suffering for them. So, you know, he's asking, why are you doing this to me? After that event, they all went their separate ways and didn't contact each other much. Sokjin must have gone back again, but in another timeline, Sokjin leaves before all of this happens. Later that night, Jungkook got hit by a car. But not just any car. Jungkook believes it was Sokjin who hit him, but the odd thing is, Sokjin doesn't remember doing that at all. And we'll get to that in a little bit. This is when the ha- Dude, uh, there is so much to this story, and the fact that, like, it's not even just... It, obviously, it's a timeline of events, but, like, we keep jumping back and then going forward, especially Sokjin, and we keep, like, changing everything that happens, and it's almost, like, multiple different, like, parallel storylines going along, and it's, like, they keep altering and then going on to another one and another one. Highlight reels come in. So after they've gone their separate ways and they didn't really contact each other much, we're gonna touch base on each character. Hoseok was the first person who heard about Jungkook's accident. He was working at the burger joint when Jungkook's classmates came in and talked about the car accident. Hoseok and Jimin came to visit him after he was unconscious for 10 days. They were upset wow. that Jungkook didn't contact them immediately. Jungkook ends up meeting a girl at the hospital who helped him stay positive during his recovery. Yoongi was making music again with the help of a girl who played the guitar. She was giving him free solo performances at schools and hospitals. Ever since he got addicted to his work again, he would lose sense of time. He didn't answer calls or checked his messages. He finally- See, like I'm going back now and I was so confused as to what was going on in all of these videos and now it's all making sense, Matt. Why did I not watch this sooner? Really I am his phone, really annoyed at myself. Then it rang. It was a phone call from Jimin telling him about Jungkook's car accident that happened the night they came back from the beach. Yoongi made it to the hospital but couldn't bring himself to go in. He felt like it was his fault that Jungkook got hurt. Jungkook went outside with the girl he met at the hospital. They were sitting on a bench while he began to sketch. Then he heard a familiar song. It was a song Yoongi would play during high school. He looked over and it was the girl with the guitar. He got closer and noticed the lighter hanging on her guitar with the initials YK. It was Yoongi's initials. Taehyung is now all alone. See, when I was watching that, I took a completely different meaning from it, and it wasn't anything to do with the storyline. I took a completely different meaning when I was watching it, and now to have that, But then he catches crazy. a girl stealing at a convenience store. They run into each other a couple more times and ended up basically becoming friends. They spent about a month together until one day, they were spraying graffiti at the bus stop Namjoon usually stops at. The cops began to chase them until they were cornered. Taehyung ended up surrendering, but after being released from jail, the girl was nowhere to be found. Jimin ends up going back home after they returned from the beach. After he ran away from the hospital, he has been living with Hoseok, but now it's time to go back home. His mother forced him to join an academy, and he was finally able to join Hoseok's dance class called Just Dance. During dance practice, Jimin and Hoseok's friend collided. 
Instead of him reacting to the girl getting hurt, he ends up running into the bathroom to wash the blood off his arm in a panic. This reminded him of what he did at the flying laboratorium, where he would run away. As soon as he realized what happened, he ran after Hosok and the girl with an umbrella to help out, but stopped and turned back. Hosok carried the girl in the rain to the hospital. In the process, he hurts his ankle. They made it, and the doctor told him she had a mild concussion. Hosok discovers a plane ticket to the U.S. in her backpack. He realized that she wait. So even in even in Hobie's solo work, this storyline is a thing. Passed the overseas dance team audition, she became conscious and was ready to go home. When they got to the entrance, she was about to tell him about her going to the U.S., but instead. Hosok avoided it and made an excuse to get an umbrella. He just didn't want to hear about her leaving. Namjoon becomes interested in a girl he's been seeing every day for about a month. They would take the same bus to study in the same library before he'd go to work at night. He never spoke a word to her though, but began to wonder what she does and what kind of things she's enduring. It's probably because she reminded him of himself. He finally got the courage to buy her a hair tie, but ended up leaving it on her backpack when she was asleep. Eventually, each of the boys begin to rediscover themselves and realize they want to become a better person. Taehyung no longer wanted to be the same and wanted to protect his sister and his father, his family. Ho Sook decided to leave town and was gone for a while to heal his injured foot, since he couldn't dance. During that time, he helped out a performance group and even toured with them for a little. They asked him to officially join their group, but he realized he needed to go back home. This is this is seriously like telling the story of just a load of guys growing up and their struggles and you know just it kind of just outlines everything that people go through in life anyway. He didn't want to run away anymore. It's really relatable. He comes back to finally congratulate his friend for going overseas. Yoongi lost the guitar girl, but even though he gave up on his music countless of times, he'd always start music again. And he didn't want to run away from it anymore. The Yoongi's character Jimin is so Yoongi. Jimin continued to dance and this, would practice by himself every in night. This line, he when it comes wanted to, the to music. commit to something and prove that he was good at it. Namjoon thought back to his high school years. Everything he had given up on, he wanted to start again. Jungkook was the only one who seemed to be off, especially after the car accident. He was trying to figure out what happened that night. Now, all of the boys planned on meeting up for the yearly fireworks on August 30, year 22. It was actually Hosok's idea to get everyone together, and after he returned from taking a break, their group chat started buzzing again. Now there's the Sokjin. Chat. In July, Sokjin saw a girl drop her diary while crossing the railroad tracks. In that diary was her wish list of things to do. He ends up meeting up with her and doing everything she's been wanting, but he never told her that he had her diary. One of the things on her wish list was smeraldo flowers. Sokjin was able to find a shop who could order those, but they wouldn't be able to get a hold of it until August 30. Sokjin was thinking of confessing his love for her with the flowers while the fireworks bursted in the sky. But that didn't happen.、Uh-huh. Sokjin was able to receive the bouquet of smeraldo flowers from the delivery truck. He discovered there was no card in the bouquet and immediately called the owner. Ah, I'll make a U-turn now. The light just changed. Before the owner finished his sentence, the girl came into view and began <laughs> to walk towards him across the road. Then, bam! She got hit by the truck. He travels back to save her, which he thought was pretty easy to solve, but would encounter another tragic event with Namjoon on September 30, year 22. Namjoon would end up passing away during a fire inside his container home. Sukjin couldn't figure out how to save him. 
Each time the loop began, the relationship between him and the girl deteriorated. They always did what her diary said, but each loop she grew more distant. She asked him for a breakup because Sokjin was becoming strange and that she didn't know him anymore. He then stopped getting involved with the girl. He ends up giving back her diary and apologizing. The diary acted as a starting and stopping point for them. He tried to become someone else by following everything that diary had, but realized that only being true to himself, he can continue to move forward. From this Dude, point- Jin has got a massive, well, I knew he had a massive part in this, but like with the time traveling and the way that he's like, he can go into these loops and stuff, like he's got such an interesting character. Point on, right. I'm going to be honest, you guys, it gets confusing even for me. Oh God, A lot more go. time travels happened, but for this video, I'll try to make it easier to understand and simplify the timeline. Now, the fire at Namjoon's place was caused by goons who came to kick everyone out from the container neighborhood. There was a redevelopment plan established and it would demolish the container neighborhood along with Hoseok's orphanage. Sokjin's father was actually part of this plan along with his father's right-hand man named Uncle Junho. No matter what Sokjin did, he couldn't get past September 30, so he made a deal with the cat. He asked the cat how to save Namjoon and the cat said, Find the map of the soul, then you'll be able to end all of this. Instead, the map of the there soul. will be a price. That's crazy. We find out later that the price was him losing his memories. And whenever he would try to remember, or if he was in a familiar place, he would get major headaches. Because of this, he was beginning to forget why he was doing all of this in the first place and was losing himself. So now he's on a search for the map of the soul. At first, he thought it was in the form of a book and started looking through libraries and bookstores. At one point, he asked Namjoon about it. And of course, Namjoon didn't know. Jimin also overheard Sokjin asking a doctor at the hospital about the map of the soul. Sokjin was actually there to get checkups for his major headaches. But of course, they couldn't figure out why he was getting those headaches. Jimin texted the group asking, do you know what the map of the soul is? Namjoon mentioned that Sokjin also asked him the same thing a couple days ago. So now the rest of the boys decided to try and figure out what is going on with Sokjin. But they left Jungkook out of this group chat since he was still sick and he was in the hospital and they just wanted him to get better. At the same time, Taehyung had also been trying to put the pieces together from his dreams. Remember that he's been having dreams of past timelines, and at this point, I feel like he knows what's really going on. So he realized that Sokjin needed their help but wasn't asking for it. Now the boys begin their Dude. search for the Tay is like super in tune, isn't he? I've noticed his character is like very like understands people very well. This map of the soul. July 10, year 22. Taehyung told Namjoon about his dreams and that they were somehow linked to reality. One of the dreams was the fire incident at Namjoon's container. It then switched to Sokjin in the middle of a meeting room inside a tall building looking out the window. From his view, across the stream were apartment buildings in Myeonghyun city. He saw a billboard for canned coffee on a building rooftop and behind it was a commercial building with a four-leaf clover logo displayed on the second floor. Sokjin phoned someone and said a word or two then hung up. A moment later, lights turned off in every building. Sokjin smiled. Now Taehyung and Namjoon go searching for this location for days. During this time, there had been a typhoon as well. After so many days, they realized they couldn't find it because the lie. billboard had not changed yet. So on July 18, the energy drink was replaced with the canned coffee billboard. They found the office of National Assemblyman Kim Changjun. It was Sokjin's father. 
They snuck into the conference room, and Taehyung snatched the Songju City redevelopment plan off a printer. They were able to make it out, but got caught and were brought to the police station. Namjoon tried dumping the papers at the police station, but later found out reporters had gotten a hold of the documents. It was then revealed on the news, and the documents caused panic amongst Hoseok's orphanage, and revealed police overlooking the would-be violence during this redevelopment. July twenty-two, year twenty-two. Guys, this is getting properly confusing. I find it. I do find it quite hard to like follow along with stories sometimes. I got a little bit lost there. I won't lie. <laughs> Jimin remembered a man locked up in the ward at the hospital named Wu Hyun Sung. The man kept saying the map of the soul was wrecked. Yoongi and Jimin went to the hospital to see this man. When the man was asked about the map of the soul, his eyes shone with rage and he screamed convulsively. Because of him, my soul was wrecked. Him. The man he was pointing to was Kim Chang Jun on TV, which was Sook Jin's father. They were thinking there was no way Sook Jin's father was somehow involved, but Jimin said the man mentioned something like Giho and that Giho was missing. Jimin mentioned that he heard Wu Hyun Sung was admitted when he was in high school. As Jimin and Yoongi were heading out from the hospital, Jimin's phone went off, and it was Jungkook calling. Yoongi shook his head. We keep this between us, away from Jungkook. He has to focus on getting better. We can tell him when it's over. Little did they know, Jungkook actually saw them leaving the hospital, which is why he called Jimin. And Jimin lied to him by saying he was on his way home from Hangwon. Now, while all this is happening and the other boys are looking for the map of the soul, Jungkook had been going over the scenes of the car accident that night. Police had shown him the surveillance camera of the accident. He realized it was Sukjin's car, but Jungkook lied and said he doesn't remember anything. At one point, he even asked Hoseok about Sukjin, but Hoseok looked flustered. And this made Jungkook think that Hoseok knew something about Sokjin being involved in the car accident, but it was actually because they were trying to keep him out of the loop with the whole map of the soul, so he can recover. So it wasn't because of them knowing about the car accident, you know. So over time, Jungkook began to believe the boys knew about this accident, but were hiding it from him. Now that the city knew about the redevelopment, the plan for it sped up. Namjoon's boss at the gas station talked about one of Sukjin's father's high school friends who went missing and was never found. Jimin found a blog uploaded 10 years ago titled "The Missing Student from Songju Jail High School." Was Principal Jo Jin Myung involved? No comment was his answer. Taehyung also asked his uncle about Sokjin's father, since they were about the same age. He found out that Sokjin's father, Kim Changjun, went crazy when his friend went missing. One day, Changjun was found collapsed in the music room in the annex, and that was it. He stopped looking for his missing friend. Changjun completely changed after that and had no feelings. Taehyung asked, "Which one is the annex building?" The uncle mentioned that back in the old day, they also used the small building on the left-hand side of the gate. The music room was inside the one-story building. This was the same room the boys made into their secret hideout. Taehyung messaged his new findings in the group chat. This, oh man, it all loops back to the start. Saying, "And you know our classroom." It used to be a music room 30 years ago, and something must have happened to Sukjin's father in that room. Jimin told the group chat about the principal, Jo Jin Myung. He Dude, they they could make this into like a full feature length film. I'm not even lying. They could they could legit make a movie about this. Things he like was this involved line. in the、It's、case、crazy. of the missing student, and that he went to school the same time as Sukjin's father. 
Namjoon went to the Songji City Library to find old newspapers. The missing student's name was Choi Gyu Ho. The article had an interview with his mother. It said that he left home saying he was going to see a friend. She asked him which friend and why so late, and he said he had to see his friend at school. He definitely looked scared and she didn't know why she didn't stop him. Below the article was the missing student's picture, name and description of what he was wearing. He was a senior in Songju Jae-il High School. They began searching the classroom and Jimin pointed on the scribbles. Among so many scribbles were several names. They read Kim Chang-jun. Jimin pointed to another name, Woo Hyun-sung, the guy at the psychiatric ward. I can't recognize the other names. Yoongi pointed to another name, Choi Gyu Ho, the guy who went missing, right? Namjoon read a sentence below the names. What? Everything started from here. So Kim Chang Jun is Seok Jin's father. Woo Hyun Sung is the guy at the psychiatric ward. Choi Gyu Ho is the friend that went missing. Now, they didn't mention or point out the name Jo Jin Myung, who was a principal, but they mentioned that he also went to the same school and that he might have been involved in the case because of the past article. So I don't know if the principal used to be part of that friends thing who also went to the music room, but something happened and he was probably involved. Dude, I can see why people get so into this because there's so many like open-ended parts of it and there's so many like there's so many chances to create all these theories as to what you think happened. Like it's really fascinating. July like, 24, see why, year I can 22. See why people are so into it. 2 weeks ago, they decided to throw so a party to celebrate him being discharged from the hospital, but they completely forgot about it. So many things have happened since then and they all ended up showing up late. Hoseok was the last to make it since he had been protesting and fighting in front of the city hall in order to stop the redevelopment. As soon as he arrived to the party, he went straight for Sokjin and asked him to take Yangji Children's home out of the redevelopment plan. Sokjin listened without moving a muscle and said, It's grown up business. Sokjin scrawled and rubbed his temples. He pushed his hand against the wall and stood up. So. From the scene, you know he's getting his major headache again. Then he says, "Until when do I have to look after you guys? Can you please learn to do things by yourself?" And Sokjin banged open the door and left. Jungkook watched Sokjin get into his truck and back away. He saw the scratch on his bumper and strangely didn't feel anything. Everything became abundantly clear. So at this point, Sokjin is so frustrated, he's fed up, he's lost himself, he doesn't remember why he's even doing all of this in the first place. Sokjin thought that it was a waste of time to attend Jungkook's party instead of going to another redevelopment meeting. He went there in the first place thinking that they were going to talk about the map of the soul, but instead, you know, Hoseok begged him to save the orphanage. We know that Sokjin is going through it and he's no longer himself. At this point, he was no longer trying to save the boys for their sake. He just wanted to find the map of the soul to end the constant loop and basically save himself. But we know he was going through it. So Dude, Jin has been through a hell of a lot in this story and it's almost like, you know, his his priorities have changed because he is so he's struggling so much with himself that he just can't He's got no time for other people, he has to just focus on himself. Can't blame Sokjin. <laughs> August 2, year 22. Sokjin came back to a note on his desk saying, A draft of your father's memoir. You're in it too, so some feedback would be appreciated. The note was from Uncle Junho, which was his father's right-hand man. It was his first time being asked to read it in this loop. It might have been a butterfly effect from having gone to Jungkook's party instead of the meeting. The wind from the window ended up blowing the papers on the floor. As he began to pick it up, his eyes landed on something interesting. 10 pages were missing and he flipped to the table of contents and there he saw the map of the soul. Although he was disappointed because the chapter that was titled Map of the Soul had nothing in it about what the title meant. But he saw the passage. 
When I thought about my high school days, I realized the map I've been looking for wasn't a real map with roads or dead ends, directions, and scales. It was just another name for the life I have lived, the countless hours I have lived since then, and the choices I have made. It'd be the trajectory of all my failures, success, mistakes, and blunders, but I failed to find the map. In retrospect, I realized that I landed on the right path because of my failures. That is great. So the map of the soul is like, it's like personal to you. Like it's actually the, you, the life that you've lived. Like it's not a defined thing. That's the way that I took it. Sokjin then remembered what Taehyung had told him. You have lost your memories. Sokjin ran back into his room and pulled out a box from under the desk and found a couple of photo books and envelopes with Polaroid pictures. He began to look through the pictures and asked himself, did this really happen? When he tried to remember, the headache came back. He stood up and looked at the pile of pictures and gritted his teeth and tried to focus. Fighting against the pain, he tried to remember only when he was able to overcome the pain, he will be able to find the trajectory of his life and arrive at the map of the soul. Sokjin texted Taehyung the picture. Dude, this is crazy and I love as well, obviously map of the soul, it gives a whole other meaning for me to, you know, the, the, the album map of the soul. Because now when I think about that word, it, I just think of, you know, the meaning that it holds here. Here's an asked, did this really happen? Taehyung then texted the group asking, where is everyone? He wanted to gather everyone to help Sokjin remember. August 3, year 22. They brought Sokjin to the storage classroom to help bring back his memories, but he struggled with headaches. Out of frustration and just hurting from this headache, he tried to leave, but Taehyung stopped him. They broke out into a fight and knocked over a wall, revealing a cabinet. Inside the cabinet was a diary. This diary belonged to Sokjin's father. According to the diary, his father had gone through what was happening to him. Like him, he made mistakes and blundered, and he tried to undo them over and over again. But he failed. The diary was a record of his failures. After making the deal to save his friends, he was in a time loop. He tried to find the map of the soul, but failed and gave up. He forgot about it and went into denial and betrayed his friends. Sokjin looked up at the wall and remembered seeing his father's name around there and below it said everything started from here. Perhaps it was inevitable that they'd return to this place. Sokjin came back home and the pictures were still strewn on the floor. He still had a throbbing headache, but he knew that pain was the evidence that he was trying to remember what was important to him. Suddenly, people in the pictures seemed to be moving. All of the moments in the pictures were lifted up in the air and were replaying like videos. The whole room shone bright with whirling memories that were sad, wistful, heartbreaking, and joyous. He then realized something was exuding light from his pocket. He took it out. It was a Polaroid picture with clear crumpled lines. He remembered the moment they took the picture. This was the first look ever for the six of them to be in the picture without him. Before then... Dude, I'm pretty sure... Wait, I'm pretty sure I've got that Polaroid somewhere. Like, because someone sent it to me through the PO box. What an iconic picture. And to think it plays this big of a part in the story is crazy, man. First look ever for the six of them to be in the picture without him. Before then, he would use a timer. He looked down at the picture in his hand and the scene started to change slowly. There was Sukjin, standing next to his friends in front of the car by the beach. He That's suddenly mad. remembered the cat and the contract they made. There will be a price to pay. He realized what kind of horrible contract he signed up for. Do you think he could straighten out the errors and mistakes and save all of you? He was finally able to answer the question. The question itself was wrong. He didn't have to save them. He didn't have to straighten out all of the errors and mistakes either. What he had to do was accept all of his errors and mistakes as part of him. The one and only person he couldn't save was himself, 
and he had to forgive, accept, and love himself. That was the only. See, it's just crazy how it's such a complex story, but at the end of the day, like it all comes together to promote a message like that, which is so simple. Like that's amazing, man. The answer. He then realized all the pain had come to an end. August seven, year twenty-two. That's a beautiful Sultan message. Sultan went into the den well. and gave his father the diary. His father took the diary and flipped through the pages. Instantly, his face became distorted. A look of pain was on his face now. Sukjin asked his father about the redevelopment plan and to think about it one more time. His father said, "No, it has nothing to do with me now." August 10, year 22. Sukjin had gone through the documents found in the safe inside the inner room. Papers guaranteeing kickbacks from the construction company, slush funds, shabby construction and profiteering, contract ad libitum. Dual contracts and also papers fabricated to conceal all these legal dealings. His father had gotten to a place of no return. Sokjin took out his phone and called the reporter who had disclosed the first document concerning the redevelopment plan. Now he had to do what he had to do. Sokjin texted the boys to meet at Namjoon's container. August 11, year 22. They all arrived at the container and sat around the sofa. Sokjin started telling them about what happened back in high school. Sokjin apologized to Yoongi for getting him expelled. Then he began to tell everyone the whole story, finding out the future misfortunes of everyone after he came back from America, the cat that he met at the beach, the contract to turn back time, and the things he had experienced over and over again since then. The map of the soul, the price to pay, losing his memories. They had no idea whether the sandstorm began while Sokjin was talking or not. As Sokjin continued with the story, the wind became stronger. Everyone ended up closing their eyes, shedding tears from the prickly rain of sand. They couldn't see with their eyes, but they could feel it, as if they experienced it themselves. Something flashing as time began to go back. The sound of a window being shattered. In the sandstorm, they finally understood what happened to Sukjin. No one spoke. The sandstorm disappeared without a trace,、wow. and the moon hung in the night sky. Soon after Sukjin started telling them his story, all the others looked as if they totally understood what he was saying, except for Jungkook. He thought Sukjin was Jungkook, going to mention、man. the car accident, but didn't. I mean, it remains a mystery until now. Jungkook believes Sokjin was the one who hit him, but Sokjin doesn't remember any of this. During the it's stuff like that that makes this story so captivating, and it's like, wait, like what? What is、Night、going on、accident. here? Like, makes you、Sokjin、question it. Sokjin had a major headache and had closed his eyes while he was driving. He then opened his eyes to a loud honking noise and saw headlights in front of him. As a reflex, he turned the wheel and skid against the asphalt. He stepped on the brake, and the car crashed into the opposite guardrail, and finally stopped. He opened the door and stepped out. The road was empty of cars. The car that was flashing its light was also gone. So we don't know the full story yet. Jungkook believes Sukjin is the one who hit him, but on Sukjin's side. He was probably going crazy. He thought he saw a car, but there was no car. Maybe the dent in front of his truck that Jungkook saw was actually a mark from the guardrail he hit, and not him hitting a person. But when Jungkook saw the surveillance camera, he saw Sukjin's car. So I don't know. There's something. Dude, I love a good mystery like this, man. And do you think maybe if they continue the storyline in the future, we're gonna find out what happened? Because you know, I just hate being left on a cliffhanger like this, not knowing what happened. Missing. There's something else going on with that, but we'll eventually find out. August twenty, year twenty-two. I hope 22. so. I hope、They、we do find out. They put a stop to the redevelopment plan and arrested the people involved in the corruption. His father was not an exception. Uncle Junho, which was the right hand man, had disappeared right after news of his involvement went out. August twenty two, year twenty two. A drunk man harassed Namjoon when he came home from work. Everything is ruined because of you, he said. You talked Sokjin into this, didn't you? You ruined everything. 
The drunk man kept babbling about things, but Namjoon couldn't understand. August 25, year 22. Sokjun went to Namjoon's container home and found Uncle Junho with a gasoline canister at his feet. A fire erupted from the container. Not long after, Namjoon arrived and ran towards the burning container. He jumped over the flames and threw himself against the container door. The little kid, Woo Chang, was still inside. He had been taking care of this kid for a couple of months now, and so this kid was stuck inside a burning What? container. Just when they were about to escape through the door, construction materials ended up falling and blocking their way out. Namjoon turned and saw Sukjin through the window. They were able to pull open the window to rescue the kid and Namjoon. August 30, year 22. Okay, the good, boys were finally good, good. gathered once again for the annual firework festival. They watched the fireworks light up the sky and fall limply down back to the stream. Everyone seemed to be enjoying the show except for Jungkook, who was looking down at his phone and playing a shooting game. Jungkook, come and see me at the workroom after school. Let's talk, Yoongi said. If I get time, Jungkook spat out in response and started a new game. So at this point, Jungkook is just out of it. He feels like the boys are lying to him. He is so sure that Sukjin is lying to him as well. So Jungkook has, yeah, Jungkook has become the kind of outcast in the group now. It's, it's mad how each of them have kind of gone off at different times. Well, and it was the one who hit him with the truck, so... It's not looking good. There's this like burning, growing rage and anger inside of him that will be an issue. September 27, year 22. At today's court first hearing, Sokjin's father admitted to all charges and gave up his right to defend himself. As he was walking out of the courtroom, he turned and looked at Sokjin. He looked peaceful and calm, a look that Sokjin had never seen before. And for a fleeting moment, there was a sense of lightheartedness in his expression. Sokjin was seeing that expression for the first time, but he knew that was his father's true face. He came home and ran to the inner room. His father's diary from high school was on the desk. He had written, I found the map of the soul. Everything ends here and now. That was basically the end of the Notes 2 book. We did get an odd entry, but with no date. This was the last entry in the Notes book. The odd thing about this is that it's when Jungkook got into a car accident, which is supposed to be on May 22, year 22, and it's almost like the same entry, but this time the dates is all X's and yeah. <laughs> Now, during the time of the accident, Jungkook heard a voice right. say, Living is going to be more painful than death, but do you still want to live? It was the cat with blue and green eyes, the same cat that made the deal with Sukjin. But unlike the first note that we got with a date, this one mentioned that Jungkook remembered hearing this from somewhere. So this wasn't the first time and this has happened more than once. But that's all we've gotten so far, you guys. I hope you enjoyed that's this so, updated BTS so storyline summary video. What If the hell? Wait, I would you Excellent. What do you mean that's all? There is so much of this storyline. I'm a bit kind of like overwhelmed, and I knew I probably would be because it's a lot to take in all of this from, you know, from one video in an hour. I've just kind of like everything has just kind of come all of these little references that I obviously knew about have just been explained to me, and it's just mind-blowing, man and it's crazy i love the fact that bts have this kind of storyline running through their music i think that is just such a beautiful thing it adds like another layer on top of just the music it also gives the music videos and the music itself like a much like bigger meaning and backstory to it and i think it's a beautiful message that is being told through the story of ultimately just like loving yourself and accepting your flaws and you know that kind of message 
through the through such a beautiful story like this is amazing but um yeah again thank you so much to holly jane for uh, suggesting this i really do appreciate all the patrons for voting in as well we finally done it and um yeah i'll be interested i i'm gonna have to give it like a, i'm gonna go back and i'm gonna flick through because there was a couple bits in there that i was a little bit confused by so i'm gonna go back after this video and um kind of like re-watch a couple bits that i didn't really understand but man there is a lot to this story and i love it so uh yeah hopefully you guys did enjoy today's video if you did watch to the end thank you so much hopefully you did enjoy this little like it was kind of a more chill reaction just checking this out with you guys and um yeah i really enjoyed it so hopefully you guys did as well but yeah, again, if you guys did have enjoyed today's video, I like it to down below, be much appreciated. And if you're brand new to my channel, you've never seen my face before, you have been enjoying these BTS reactions you've been seeing, make sure you are subscribed down below, guys. Click that button, become a part of the family. We'd love to have you join us. As I always say, we do try to upload these videos every single day. And um, yeah, we will keep up with everything when it comes to BTS and everything they're doing. So I'm super excited. And hopefully the storyline in the future. I really hope that this is something that the boys are going to continue because it does not seem like it's over to me, to be honest. So, um, yeah, super excited for that. But uh, have a beautiful rest of your day, guys. Hopefully, you're staying safe with everything that's going on. We'll catch you very, very soon in the next BTS reaction. Peace out.